Hey, Ryan, when, when Carl talks about, you know, and, and you've talked about the commitment to the defensive end and what you've seen from him in training camp, what does that look like from him? Because we know, like, doing too much isn't the solution in this defense. So what is the attention to detail, the focus, him just maybe elevating his game to another level? What does that look like this year? Yeah, it's a daily process. You know, it's we're an actions over words group. Um, so, you know, we, we got to see it consistently from, from everyone. And uh, but Carl's uh, focus on the defensive end has been him just not trying, like you said, not trying to do too much. Uh, him staying solid, him under, understanding better, I think, um, where we want him to be when it comes to a pick and roll coverage, when we want him getting back to, you know, the roller, when we want him engaged with the ball handler. Um, we still have a lot we need to shore up in that sense. Um, but, you know, being one, one year in, you, you do see more comfort. You do see more comfort with the terminology. Um, but, you know, it'll be an ongoing process with our group. Johnny, you have a question? I do. Uh, hey, Ryan, I just was wondering with um, in the Dallas game with Anthony Edwards getting a little bit of time on Luca, and just what did you see from him defensively there? And how is that part of his game coming along? Just knowing he's obviously young, he's got a lot to learn, but did he show you a few things in some of the stuff he was able to do against Luca in a couple of those occasions? Yeah. I mean, you saw upside, you saw potential. Uh, you also, as a coach, you saw um, somebody who showed what he could do when fully engaged on you know, every possession. And uh, that's something we've been stressing to our group. Uh, we know we need to speed up the uh, learning curve for a lot of guys. Um, and, you know, in, being engaged, um, giving maximum effort, that's half the battle. And uh, I liked a lot of things that Ant was able to do in, in the Dallas game. What do you think just in terms of what you have seen in his kind of willingness to jump into the fight, I guess, and, you know, and, and kind of battle guys? I mean, from a mentality standpoint, what are you seeing from him on that end? Yeah, he's a, you know, he's got a mentality. Um, you hear him in the gym. You know, we like that. We like that he's, he's confident. Um, you know, he, he helps make practices c competitive as well. We've had some really competitive, we tried to play a lot. And, uh, you know, that's the best way to get in basketball shape is to be playing. Um, you know, we, stop, we still stop, uh, correct, but we also, you know, try to get up and down a lot, um, especially after those, those first two preseason games um, as we continue to try to get in better shape. But he brings a lot to our gym and uh, his ability to, to uh, you know, I guess, attack and be, be on the, the aggressive uh, side of things uh, is a positive for our, our team. Uh, we'll go Britt and then Dane. Britt, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan, I'm wondering, um, I know a 10-man rotation is already a pretty large rotation. I'm wondering if you get to a point where, like, Cat gets in early foul trouble or, or somebody else does, uh, is it a situation where you would want to go 11 deep sometimes, or yeah. is 10 really kind of stretching? Yeah, no, I'm not opposed to that. And uh, as we as we move forward, you know, we continue to see, uh, you know, the type of shape that these guys are in, you know, when it comes to, to game situations, um, the game will tell you, tell you what to do in a lot of ways. And, you know, I've, I've never, you know, Hey, I've never been afraid to try something if something isn't working. And, um, you know, the foul trouble, we, we noticed that was something that uh, was, you know, an issue in uh, preseason. So we got to be prepared for anything. And um, we've said it a number of times, a lot of us, but, um, depth is key this year and depth, uh, you know, having guys ready to fill roles, uh, when maybe they aren't available, whether it be for, you know, COVID reasons, whether it be for injury, but also, you know, foul trouble type reasons. When it comes to uh, cat in games, one and three had five and six fouls in game two. He only had one foul, but there were 62 points in the paint. How do you, um, basically help him make the kind of decision as to when he should contest and, and when he should just let the, let the ball go in the hoop. Yeah. I mean, we, we've been working with that this, this last week, um, you know, and we don't ever want to let the ball just go in the hoop, but you know, we, we also, uh, we want to be a good verticality team and that's something we're, we're focusing more on as well. Um, being vertical, um, not coming down. I thought we did we did a poor job of that in those first two games, especially. But coming down on on guys trying to finish at the rim, uh, you know, in, in, in this this way fashion, as opposed to just going straight up. Um, so just those little details, and then also, you know, if we do our work early and guards get get over screens and get square, 
um, we won't have to engage the big two. So it's a, it's a shared responsibility. We'll do uh, Dane and then Ken. Dane, go ahead. Ryan, uh, my question's about uh, Malik and D'Angelo and just the role you play in maximizing them um, on, on both sides of the ball. How, how are you going to be to be trying to, to do that? We've kind of seen a little bit of a stagger with Ricky offensively. I guess, can you, can you touch on that, how to maximize that pair offensively, but also what you can do defensively to get the most out of that duo? Yeah, uh, first off, offensively, um, I trust our point guards. And uh, we have a package. Uh, we spent a lot of time with our offensive package and having, you know, sets and, and go-to sets for specific guys. Um, you know, I, I love when point guards are able to call the game. D'Lo, Ricky, uh, whoever it is out there, um, you know, especially being cerebral guys, knowing where guys should get their spots. Um, you know, I think D'Lo does a good job of that early in games. Typically, um, Ricky, you know, that's, that's always been something that's a, a forte of his. One of the reasons we've liked Ricky playing with these a little bit, um, looking at, you know, some other catch and shoot type actions for him when he's in the game. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, we obviously want to run. So, you know, B's one of his best attributes is, is getting the corners and having guys make plays for him uh, too. So that's uh, something that's, that's going to be important with our group moving forward. And then defensively, um, I like, uh, I like Malik's uh, commitment to the defensive end this year so far. And that's not just in those three preseason games. That's in practice. That's in his individual vitamins um, that we do every day. Um, really like his approach in that sense. Um, you know, so, you know, I think we can keep him on, you know, high level offensive players too. Uh, we got to find a way to balance that, you know, as he expends a lot of energy on the offensive, offensive end as well. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we have standards that we, we want to stick with. Um, we have a number of other things that we're looking to get to as we continue to, to progress. Um, and it's, you know, about helping your teammate. We'll do uh, two more. We'll do Kent and then Jace. Kent, go ahead. Thanks for your time, Coach. Um, you talked the other day about how you wanted to have either uh, Ricky or Russell on uh, on the floor at all times. They could play some together. Do you see them playing a lot together? And given kind of the different skill sets the two have, how will your team and maybe rotations change depending on which one is is on the court at any particular time? Yeah, the uh... – you know, I, I see them playing together. Um, that's one of the reasons we we like the, the the move when the opportunity presented itself this summer. Uh, and you know, having Deal play off the ball a little bit too, especially when teams start trapping him in pick and rolls. Um, you know, we like what offense that brings. And Deal has played with multiple ball handlers, so you know, I, I can't pinpoint a specific number. Um, like I said, the game will tell you what to do in a lot in a lot of those situations. A lot of it'll be based off matchups. Uh, but especially late in game, you like having two cerebral uh, ball handlers out there on the floor making decisions, especially when, when you have a lead. Um, and then, you know, as, as you as you continue to move forward, you know, rotations will change, you know, game by game. Um, you know, you like to try to be as static as possible so guys know when they're coming in, when they're coming out. Um, but, you know, I've said it before, we're, we're open, um, you know, based on how guys are performing, you know, and especially at those uh, three and four positions, um, you know, we got a lot of guys competing, a lot of guys who have earned a lot, a lot of those minutes. So, you know, it's no indictment on any one individual. It's more of a, a positive that these guys are, are competing and they're all, um, you know, really, really getting after it to try to command one of those uh, positions. Last question, Jace. Right. Just going back to Anthony and that confidence you've seen, I think we've seen it too on the court and sitting in the seat you're sitting in. What? How does that maybe stack up against some of the other supremely talented rookies that you've coached in your career? And what is the value uh, for a rookie coming in to have that type of confidence in himself in his game? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've said it before. I'm not big on comparisons, especially for rookies. You know, Anthony Edwards is Anthony Edwards. And he, uh, you know, he's, he'll forge his own path. And the force that he plays with is uh, different from any, any uh, other talented rookie that I've been around. Um, you know, there's other things that other guys may have uh, be further along with. So everybody has has their, their things that make them who they are. And, and the fact that he can get downhill, the fact that he plays with force, finishes in the paint. Um, I like that. Uh, you know, I, I liked his aggressiveness and just his confidence in general. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, you don't necessarily need to, you know, draw a play up for him, even though we've tried to do more of that. Uh, you know, he's somebody who's, go who's going to be aggressive. Now it's it's about continuing to grow. Um, continuing to make sure that we're, we're not in a settled position, 
um, as an offense where, you know, we, we can either get to the rim, get fouled, or we're creating open looks for our teammates. Um, you know, and that's, that's an ongoing process. You know, I, I say that and, and I say that in wanting to be fair, uh, not just to Anthony, you know, and Jaden um, when it comes to our rookies, but a lot of rookies. It's so unique this year with how, how these guys are, you know, no summer league, uh, no, you know, off season, uh, no, none of these camps, you know, that, that they could have gone to in Vegas, no real September, no September um, where they're kind of doing OTA work. It's very unique. So, you know, we have a lot of confidence in, in Anthony. We have a lot of confidence in Jaden as he progresses as well. And, uh, you know, we'll just continue to work with them daily. And all they, all they can do is keep, just keep trying to get better.